I'm Steve Roddick, Adaptation Analyst at Yukon Government's Climate Change Secretariat. I'm going to talk today about climate change adaptation. In answering the question, what is adaptation, there are three key things that I want to focus in on. First, how do we define adaptation, and what does it mean in the context of climate change? Second, how do we, at different scales of our global society, manage and coordinate climate change adaptation? And finally, how are Northerners responding to the impacts of climate change? Adaptation, at its core, is part of evolution. It is something that natural and human systems have always done. Humans adapt to moderate or avoid harm or take advantage of new opportunities and have a long history of doing so. Adaptation emerged as a key component of our response to climate change because of the effects that climate change impacts have on natural and human systems. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change defines adaptation as the process of adjustment to actual or expected climate and its effects. For humans, this means reducing or avoiding the negative impacts of climate change and taking advantage of potential opportunities from positive impacts. For plants, animals, and other aspects of natural systems that stand to be negatively impacted by climate change, adaptation may also require human intervention. Adaptation and mitigation, which is the reduction of greenhouse gases humans produce, are complementary. They are two sides of the same coin in our response to climate change. In practice, adaptation has shifted towards a risk-centered approach that recognizes the broad influence climate change has on hazards affecting natural and human systems all over the world. This approach became front and center in the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's fifth assessment report in 2014. Risk refers to the interaction of hazards, exposure, and vulnerability. Hazards are the physical impacts of climate change, increasing temperatures, sea level rise, invasive species, and extreme weather events such as flooding or wildfires. Exposure refers to the people, assets, or other things that we value which are in a location or situation affected by climate change hazards. Vulnerability refers to the sensitivity, susceptibility, or capacity of those people, assets, or values to adapt. Take wildfires as an example. Wildfire is a hazard that occurs naturally but is influenced by climate change, meaning warmer temperatures lead to hotter, drier seasons, which lead to a higher probability of fires. People in buildings, roads, and infrastructure surrounded by forest areas are exposed to this hazard. The vulnerability of exposed populations, assets, and values depends on their susceptibility to the hazard and also their capacity to adapt. Vulnerability can be reduced by limiting forest fire fuel loads, building fire breaks, and fireproofing homes and properties via metal roofing, combustion resistant siding, and landscaping. Adaptive capacity can be increased through insurance or other mechanisms that enable those affected to rebuild. Socioeconomic context and governance also play important roles in reducing climate risk. If communities don't recognize or believe that a risk is real or significant, they are less likely to take measures to mitigate these risks or support efforts to mitigate them. Poverty or inadequate government resources affect the ability of households and communities to prepare and reduce their vulnerability, even if they want to. There also needs to be a level of social acceptance towards protective measures. Actions taken to mitigate climate risks need to align with social norms, and communities exposed to climate risks need to be educated about those risks and the importance of protective measures. Reducing climate risk ultimately contributes to building resilience to climate change, a central component of the practice of adaptation. At a system scale, like ecosystems, societies, and economies, resilience is, first, capacity to cope with a hazardous event, trend, or disturbance. Second, responding or reorganizing after experiencing climate hazards in ways that maintain the essential function of that system. And third, through it all, maintaining the capacity for adaptation, learning, and transformation. So how are we adapting? At the international level, adaptation has become an increasingly significant part of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Negotiations. 
the UNFCCC established an adaptation fund in 2001. Financed mostly by developed states, the fund provides money for projects and programs aimed at helping developing countries that are parties to the Kyoto Protocol to adapt to the harmful effects of climate change. The UNFCCC established a national adaptation planning process in 2010. It enables developing countries to formulate and implement national adaptation plans that identify medium to long-term adaptation needs and develop and implement strategies and programs to address those needs. Finally, the UNFCCC encourages its members to include adaptation efforts and planning in their intended nationally determined contribution. INDCs were established at the Conference of the Party's 19th Summit in Warsaw, Poland. They are the mechanism for countries to submit their national greenhouse gas reduction targets. This mechanism was voluntarily expanded in Lima, Peru to include adaptation-related activities and is something to watch for the years ahead. Nationally, the federal, provincial, and territorial governments have worked with each other and with other partners to advance adaptation issues that affect their respective and shared jurisdictions. Funding for adaptation research and project work has helped to advance Canadians' understanding of climate change impacts, implement adaptation projects that seek to mitigate these impacts, or build resilience to future climate change impacts. Adaptation financing comes from provincial and territorial governments, sector or issue-specific federal government programs, and also from private sector organizations with an interest in reducing climate risk. The National Adaptation Platform is one example of national-level coordination. Created by Natural Resources Canada in 2012, the platform is a mechanism to promote collaboration between a broad range of actors, including government, industry, Indigenous peoples, and professional organizations, with a shared interest in making Canada more climate resilient. This platform structures include a plenary, the coordinating forum, and a series of sector-specific working groups. In 2016, the Pan-Canadian Framework on Clean Growth and Climate Change was established, which included specific national-level adaptation priorities and areas for future action. This agreement established a structure for Canada's provinces and territories to collectively advance and measure progress towards national-level adaptation priorities. In the North, the challenges of climate change are real and critical. In each territory, government adaptation staff work with partners in First Nation and municipal governments and organizations, academic institutions, industry, and non-governmental organizations to understand and respond to a range of climate change challenges. Adaptation is part of the work of climate change offices in all three territorial governments, each of which has produced its own climate change action plan and strategies that identify commitments to address adaptation. Municipal and First Nation governments are also developing adaptation plans and strategies and are supported by a range of NGOs and academic organizations to advance this work. Multilateral engagement between different governments and other actors with an interest in climate change adaptation are also becoming a more common and effective mechanism to drive adaptation action. Some examples of pan-northern adaptation actions to date include the Pan-Territorial Adaptation Partnership. Since 2010, the governments of Yukon, NWT, and Nunavut have worked together to share information and collaborate on northern adaptation projects of mutual interest. The Northern Adaptation Strategy. In 2017, the Federal Department of Indigenous and Northern Affairs, working in partnership with the three territorial governments, the Government of Quebec, the Government of Newfoundland and Labrador, and other northern stakeholders, created a comprehensive Northern Adaptation Strategy. These are just a few examples of the work many groups across the North have taken to address climate risk and build adaptive capacity. To conclude, I'd like to reiterate a few final thoughts. Adaptation to climate change is the latest incarnation of a very old concept. Preparing for or adjusting to actual or expected change is how human and natural systems evolve. The practice of climate change adaptation has become more focused on issues of risk and resilience. Understanding how climate change affects existing hazards and vulnerabilities and how human and natural systems can increase their resilience to climate change. Adaptation policy and governance continues to develop and improve 
and a wide range of actors are now engaged in adaptation governance frameworks that span international, national, regional, and local scales. Northerners are recognizing and responding to climate change impacts through a variety of actions that serve to increase climate change knowledge and awareness and enhance adaptive capacity. I hope this has given you a better understanding of what climate change adaptation means and how people are adapting at different scales across the globe, but especially in the North. How are you adapting to climate change?